Hello, welcome to Paint by Blunders video one. Uh, we're taking a look at the Seraphon Croxigore. I've primed it in Gracia from GW just out of the rattle can and I tried testing a few rocks uh, beforehand. They look absolutely terrible, I'm well aware of that. The uh, cork I ordered for basing is just a little bit too, well it's just a little bit too rubbish so I will texture paint over that later. I could have just chipped it off but I'm rolling with it now. Also the paints I'll be using for this video are majority Games Workshop. There are a few pro acrylic paints in there but nothing that can uh, not be swapped out by a GW equivalent. So as you can see from the little intro video I've gone for a mix between what I wanted was an albino sort of croxicore but I really like all the new Tyranid stuff that came out so I've sort of gone for a more Leviathan box art of the Tyranids really but in croxical form. So enough waffling from me uh, I'm going to do something very strange to start with Retribute Rama and I'm going to pick out the gold first just because when I start doing the skin etc if I get the gold on the skin I know full well it's going to take a couple of coats to go back and after I've done the wash I don't want to do that. So we're just going to put on the Retribute Rama trying not to get the skin just because I know it's a a lot of aggro touching it up. Series 7 Windsor & Newton, size 1. I use it for absolutely everything and I beat the hell out of this brush. It's brilliant. So the gold's looking good, or good enough. Uh, we're going to get onto the skin wash. So I'm going to mix 70-30 with a little bit of Pro Acrylic Glaze & Wash Medium Ooh. and Citadel Shade Drucci Violet. I've pre-bottled it because it's just easier for me. And you are probably thinking, couldn't you have just used Dreadful Visage? You're absolutely right. Do I own that paint? No, I do not. So this is what we're working with. As always with shading and washes and contrast, always looking out for the pooling and we're just trying to push it into all those recesses to give it a nice, nice bit of depth. I'm not worried particularly about hitting the thicker scales just because we're going to come onto that later with uh, a much darker contrast and it'll hide any of those spillages. As you can see going onto the legs, Seraphon are perfect for washes, contrast and anything like that. They've got so many little deep ridges that the uh, stuff can pull in. So we've done all the skin, it's dried. We're just going to go back now and start picking out some of the deeper bits that we want to add like a pinky tinge to just to try and give it a bit more depth. Uh, I've aimed for this round the like the horny scales, <laughs> terrible choice of words, uh, round the mouth and like the neck muscles. Uh, contrast medium, crimson, 50-50. And we're just going to put it on round all these horns, spikes I should call them, just to try and give it a little bit more interest to the eye. Bish, bash, bosh. Done. Looks great. I mean, it's nice and subtle, but it does exactly what I need it to do before we start dry brushing the skin. Look at this high precision dry brush machine. Yes, it cost me 99p from Lidl. Works perfectly. Uh, we're just going over this with a coat of Gracia with a tiny, tiny bit of Drucci in it, just to tint it. Same as always with dry brushing, you're dragging it over the raised parts, just trying to clip it with a little bit of paint and just bring up the gradient slowly. Uh, it works so well on these guys. Apologies as well for the model being very low in the screen. Like I said, this is Paint by Blunders video one, and that is, well, there's probably quite a few blunders that have already happened. So after I did the dry brushing with the tinted grey sear, I went back and just used straight grey sear. And then also did a very, very small amount of titanium white from Pro Acrylic and just gave that a little, a little go over it as well. So, onto the mouth. I won't bore you with much of the details. I'm going to use Pro Acrylic Magenta. You can use anything you like for this. It's such small detail, I'm not going to waste too much time on the details of it. So, teeth and horns. We are going to go in with Pro Acrylic Dark Ivory. I think it's a Ninjon one. Superb. 
Uh, just go around to give that a quick coat. It's a bit of a laborious task, but it looks great when it's done. Onto the weapon handle, Black Legion. I absolutely love it. Hilt handled shoes, my go-to. Are you going to win a golden demon for this level of black paint? Absolutely not. But does it save me a lot of time and headache? Absolutely yes. Going into the rope sections now. Just wildwood, just a quick coat of that. Done. Small details, I'm not wasting too much time. Onto the top of the weapon. Uh, just the stone areas, basilicalum grey. It is stone in a bottle. Not much else to say on that one. Up next, probably the greatest shade of all time, Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to go around and do all the horns, spikes, anything that I've done in the dark ivory is pretty much going to get a little coat of this. It's starting to look a bit better. I'm going to start shading the gold now. Uh, Reekland Flesh Shade. Reekland? Someone's probably screaming that I've said that completely wrong. Anyway, I love the way it goes over Rich Peter Armour. I do it all the time. I should change my gold recipe, but I won't. And it's just got that nice aztec -y vibe that the uh, Seraphon love. So that's the gold done. Let's get on to the big old spines at the back. Two colours, Luxian purple and Shaish purple. 50-50, give it a mix, bish bash bosh. Nice and thick, get that stuff on. I also had to go back and realise that uh, I've got the weapon. Which I'm now going to shade with Seraphim Sepia. And a little bit of Agrax right at the end of it, where it joins the metal. There we go, looking slightly more together. Two purples now for dry brushing the spines, uh, just to bring it up a bit, because it looks a little bit dark. I was also leaning on my desk when I was doing this dry brushing, that's why it looks like my croxigore has been hit by an earthquake. Starting to get those scales to pop a bit more now. Dry brushing both ways on this because there are some ray scales every direction you can think of. Look at that, looking loads better. Or so I thought. Going to go around now and highlight the Retributor armor with just a quick coat of Liberator Gold. Goes together hand in hand like peanut butter and jam. So that's the gold highlighted, and I'm looking around thinking, this is starting to look like a serviceable model on the tabletop. We're getting there, and I'm looking thinking, the dark purple scales are just not doing what I want them to do. So, dug around, found this, and I'm just going to go over it with another dry brush again, and just to try and make it pop even more. And I think we're pretty successful in making those... Uh, back spines pop a little bit more but I do want to make them a little bit more vibrant on the edges so I will go back and just edge highlight them side of the brush you know the drill just to make them stand out a little bit more you don't have to do this I'm just doing it because I want to but you know if you're running nine of these beasts which I highly recommend you do you might not want to do this but it is worth it. These little details do really help things pop. And there we go. I'm calling those spines done. You could go back and try and push the highlights more, but it's good enough for me. On to the highlights of the dark ivory. And I'm just going to go through on the wet palette, just water it down a bit and try and get it nice and smooth. Uh, and just go through all the horns, the weapon, the claws, these little tootsie nails, before I go onto this little edge highlight of titanium white, my pro acrylic again. I just think it's a great white. I think everyone recommends this thing. I hate the bottles though, I won't lie. And there we go. Uh, starting to look a little bit less washed out now. Starting to look a bit more finished. Onto a little bit of grey sear to edge highlight around that bit of stone. I don't want to spend too much time on it, so just a quick edge highlight just to give it a bit of depth. Trying to get that nice smooth consistency and just run the edge of the brush along. And there we have it. Barney is pretty much there. I mean, you can base him in whatever style you like. I think I'm going to throw a bit of mud 
texture paint down a few tufts keep it nice and standard but yeah you can push this guy further with a few more edge highlights if you wish also give him a colored eye i've just realized that mine's pure white and there we have it barney is based uh, i just used some texture paint a little wash over the top dry brush covered that terrible cork to make it look a little bit better and yeah he is ready for the tabletop thank you again for watching paint by blunders video one give it a little thumbs up and a subscribe and let's get barney on the turning wheel of fortune <laughs>